Family Guy Moments number 638. A fine vintage, and one that can be enjoyed while simultaneously watching Subway Surfers and cutting Play-Doh. Uh, by the way, I, I recently discovered that apparently all these YouTube channels that make Family Guy funny moment compilations are like in an arms race with one another, and are constantly shot down by YouTube for copyright claims, but then pop up right afterwards with another account. <laughs> Doesn't sound good. But I digress. If anything, it's crazy to think that a show that is as immensely popular as Family Guy was almost canceled. Actually, it was. In 2002, Fox dropped Family Guy from its lineup and officially kicked the show to the curb only after three seasons. Just like Brian, the show was dead. But just like Brian, not really. Brian, look out! Poor Family Guy. Unceremoniously kicked off Fox and had nowhere to go until a certain programming block stepped in. <laughs> I can't believe I made a Marvel reference in 2023, but yeah, Adult Swim came to Family Guy's rescue. And teenage me, at the time, couldn't have been happier. Like, I was the perfect demographic for Family Guy at the time. A dumb teenage boy, watching an adult animated cartoon in my basement without my parents knowing. Clearly, a thriving market at the time. Right now, I'm sitting on my rocker on the front porch of my retirement home, sentimentally thinking back to when I would play Halo 2 for hours on end, drinking Mountain Dew, Code Red, and waiting for Family Guy to air on Adult Swim. My buddy Robert and I would laugh our asses off, and after the show was over, go right back to playing Halo 2. Ha <laughs> ha! Those were the days. Without a doubt. The show would go on to shape my teenage sense of humor and become one of my favorite cartoons to watch. My buddy and I would quote this series all the time, and we even took it a step further by getting Family Guy on DVD. Yeah, cutting edge technology. But it's so funny to think that in the microcosm of my own life during those years, that my friend and I were actively helping to save Family Guy from being just a cartoon doomed to reruns. That there were tons of other viewers just like us doing the exact same thing and helping Family Guy become the number one most viewed show on Adult Swim at the time. Eventually, the reruns and DVD sales were so successful that Fox was like, hold on a second. Maybe, just maybe, we jumped the gun here and we should bring the series back to our network. Which was exactly what happened. It was the first time in history where DVD sales of a TV series revived it from the grave. But why did Fox originally cancel Family Guy? How can a show that is one of the defining cartoons of the adult animated sitcom genre get scrapped so early, yet live to fight another day? Why did the show work on Adult Swim, but not on Fox? Is Fox to blame for running Family Guy off the road? Well, let's find out. But Peter, why would they make you president? Well, maybe it's because I can recite all 50 states in a quarter of a second. Ah! But real quick, before we get into the meat of this topic, I want to give a big shout out to the sponsor of this video, Morgan & Morgan. Now, I've been in both metaphorical and literal car accidents. Be it YouTube ramming my uploads or a bad driver ramming my tailpipe. Giggity. Accidents happen, but at least with Morgan & Morgan, something can be done about the latter of the two headaches. For those who don't know, Morgan & Morgan is America's largest injury law firm. They have over 100 offices nationwide and more than 800 lawyers. With over $15 billion recovered for clients, Morgan & Morgan has a proven track record of fighting to get you full and fair compensation. Like these guys have mastered the art of submitting injury claims. Submitting a claim to Morgan & Morgan is more like ordering takeout than hiring a lawyer. You don't have to get out of your chair to submit the claim. It really is that simple. So, if you are ever injured in an accident, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. For more information, you can go to forthepeople.com slash Saberspark or dial pound law from your phone. That is pound 529. You can go check them out today. And once again, thank you Morgan & Morgan for making this video possible. All right, on with the Family Guy funny moments. Ah!
Now, many of you might not know this, but Family Guy was created by some guy, I, I think his name is Seth MacFarlane. The premise for the show came from The Life of Larry and Larry and Steve, two animated shorts, with one being a thesis film for Seth, and the other one being a spiritual successor that aired on Cartoon Network's world premiere tunes back in 1997. <laughs> no, I'm old. I remember seeing this back in the day when I was a kid, and it's so wild to see the blueprints for what would eventually become Family Guy. Uh, Larry, it says here your license is suspended. No, no, no they, they just took it away temporarily. Oh, let's see now. Where to shop? Where to shop? One well, of Stewie's has usually got good stuff. Uh, air conditioners always turn them. After these shorts, Fox was like, hey, Seth, make us a pilot. Here's $50,000, make it happen. And Seth here knocked out a pilot for Family Guy in like six months, which is like insane. Fox loved it, they greenlit the show, signed Seth up for 13 episodes, and the rest was history. Until Fox canceled the show. Unsurprisingly, Family Guy was ordered up by Fox in order to capitalize on the success of The Simpsons, which was just a force of nature at the time. Why settle for one hit? We can have all the hits. Hence why King of the Hill popped up around the same time, and also found success, though never to the same degree as The Simpsons. Fun fact. Mike Judge specifically made his own animated pitch to Fox for King of the Hill, with the characters pitching themselves to the executives. Apparently, the Fox executives loved it so much that they greenlit the series right on the spot. Dang old TV executive think you're calling you a million and a half times now. Gripe about y'all every time the dang old Loon Tunes come on, y'all put on that, that, that dang old Melrose place. Old Boomhauer ain't right. For Family Guy, the same intention for success was there, and initially, it had the momentum. The official first episode of Family Guy premiered after the Super Bowl in 1999, which was a big deal and a fantastic springboard. Family Guy, see a sneak peek right after the Super Bowl on Fox. A tactical move from Fox, no doubt, to use the residual viewers from the Super Bowl to check out new shows on their network and give them a boost. For the first season of Family Guy, Fox put it on during The Simpsons and The X-Files in order to provide a good time slot with overlapping viewers. But that would not last long. Fox decided to bump Family Guy from that time slot, and during its second season, moved Family Guy to Thursdays against Frasier, which was a competitor on NBC. Well, let's just say that Family Guy couldn't keep up with the uh, scrambled eggs. Well, Frasier, you're so corpulent that when you sit around the magnificently appointed Tuscan Villa, you sit around the magnificently appointed Tuscan Villa. Huh. This is the smartest show on TV. It should be noted that a big problem Family Guy ran into around this time was its lack of rewatchability. There were no reruns yet, nor were there any video sets for purchase. If you missed an airing of an episode, you missed it entirely. Unless you were like 70 years old and recorded it on a videotape. Yes, that is how old this show was. And me too. Family Guy was moved around some more with its time slot, and was put up against Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, which was another tough competitor, and brought down the ratings of Family Guy. Season 3 was greenlit, but then Family Guy was pitted against Friends, which was just like a fool's errand. And Family Guy's ratings continued to drop. After the third season in 2002, Fox announced its fall lineup, and Family Guy was nowhere to be seen. It was officially canceled. Everybody, I got bad news. We've been canceled. At this point for Family Guy, it looked like it was a game over. Fox sold the rights for the show for basically nothing, and Cartoon Network gladly took it up. They decided to put the show up on its adult animated evening block, Adult Swim. I cannot really describe how amazing Adult Swim was to a teenager like me at the time. It totally fed into this mentality of mine where I was like, yes, I'm an edgy teen, and I watch stuff like Aqua Teen and Space Goes Coast to Coast. It isn't your typical normie cartoons on Nickelodeon or Disney, but that's because it's for adults, hence the name of the block. Out of the pool, kids, is Adult Swim. Adult Swim. All kids out of the pool. I grew up on cartoons, so to see a block that was dedicated towards mature content and in such a creative way with such fantastic branding, oh, you better believe I was all over it, especially with me approaching my teenage years. It almost felt like it was tailor-made to my generation and my, of course, refined palate. And I'll run around naked all day. Ha <laughs> ha! Dangly parts. Like I said earlier, my buddy Robert and I were perpetually playing Halo 2 and watching Adult Swim. And I remember the day we first checked out the show, and we laughed 
hard. Just something about the tone and cutaway gags that slayed us to the point of obsession and quoting the series ad nauseum. My friend actually had this killer impression of Peter, which, yes, I know, that's pretty rare. Very few folks can do a Peter impression, haha. <laughs> but it became one of the pillars of our sense of humor. And guess what? We weren't alone. Family Guy quickly became the most popular show for Adult Swim, with its reruns topping the charts. It was a complete 180 compared to the show's performance on Fox. And along with that, video sales. And not just any video format, mind you. I'm talking about DVDs. Ones that you can put in your PlayStation 2. Cause that is the future, baby. Who are you? Are you really that dense old man? Microfiche knew who I was. <gasps> DVD! DVD sales for Family Guy were a game changer selling more than 400,000 copies in a month, and 2.2 million copies in 2003, making it the best-selling TV DVD series of the year, and at the time, the second highest grossing TV series DVD of all time. Needless to say, this caught Fox's attention as they reconsidered their decision to cancel Family Guy and brought it back from the dead. That, folks, was the first time in history where a show was revived due to successful DVD sales. In May of 2005, Family Guy was back on Fox, with its return episode bringing in nearly 12 million viewers, one of the show's highest ratings. No doubt, Adult Swim was instrumental in the success of Family Guy, and essentially served as an incubator for the series to build up a fandom via reruns and DVDs, that it provided a platform that Fox couldn't, and also an audience that was more in tune with Family Guy's sense of humor. I can attest to this. Family Guy, at least initially, felt more like my generation's version of The Simpsons, which is like no slight to The Simpsons, just my observation. Family Guy to me was a bit more absurd, especially with its cutaway gags, and me and my friend and many others from our demographic just loved it. But at the time, when Adult Swim was like, oh, the episodes are going back to Fox, oh, we have to do like joint airings of episodes with Fox and with us? Uh-oh, we, uh, we don't want to kill our golden goose here. Um, what do we do? But Adult Swim was quick on the draw. They were able to pivot. They were like, you know what we can do? Hey, folks who watch Family Guy on Fox, if you want to see the full-on cut, which is much funnier, come watch it on Adult Swim. We won't censor it like they do. They even made a bumper for it. Adult Swim was very clever to use this angle, but they also knew that they could capitalize on Fox bringing back Family Guy, since it would create more buzz for Adult Swim. According to Jim Samples, the VP and general manager of Cartoon Network at the time, quote, bringing Family Guy to the Adult Swim lineup last April really helped turn the block into a cultural phenomenon with young adults. Now, as the destination for new episodes of what has become the block's most popular series, Family Guy will help boost Adult Swim to the next level in terms of buzz and ratings. We could not be more excited to have Seth and 20th Century Fox Television on board as Adult Swim continues its growth as the best place on TV for young adults. End quote. Hey, Jim was right. Family Guy also continued its reruns on Adult Swim, though there was some pushback from some fans of the block. When you look at the rest of the lineup of Adult Swim's content from the time, you can see that it was pretty different compared to Family Guy. Aqua Teen, Squid Billies, Xavier, <laughs> Moral Oral. Very different in tone, both visually and narratively, especially compared to a family sitcom from Fox. But for me, I didn't care. And a lot of these shows probably would not have gained the audience they did if it wasn't for the cross-pollination of Family Guy from Fox with Adult Swim. But the good times would not last. And eventually, Family Guy would depart from Adult Swim, which at the time of recording this video, wasn't that long ago. The final airing for Family Guy and Adult Swim was in 2021, with Adult Swim making a unique bumper for the occasion as a farewell to Family Guy. So that begs the question, why did Family Guy leave Adult Swim after all these years? Especially with the debt they owe them. 
Well, it's most likely due to Disney acquiring Fox and wanting to shift the show off Adult Swim, since they were essentially benefiting off the good graces of Fox from back in the day. But Disney was in charge now, and they were like, ha, huh, now nah, that's over. And they moved Family Guy to their own respective platforms, like FXX and Hulu. Disney wanted to get paid, especially after buying Fox in 2019. So of course, they waited for the highest bidder, which did not include Cartoon Network. Morning. Good day to you, sir. Hey, wait a minute, what the hell? <laughs> Today, Family Guy is still successful and continues its march along with The Simpsons with season after season after season. Though I would say, in my own personal opinion, the Family Guy has broader appeal to the newer generation of viewers. I'm looking at you, Zoomers. Just something about its writing, format, and sense of humor seems more accessible for younger audiences, which was like the exact same hook for me back in the day. But I can still see it doing the same thing to this present day. I don't see clips of The Simpsons in TikTok videos nearly as much as Family Guy. So <laughs> take that metric for what it's worth. Is it good? Is it bad? <laughs> Maybe both. Now, it was a bummer to see Family Guy leave Adult Swim. It was a defining show for them, and Family Guy would not currently exist if it wasn't for Adult Swim. They truly were the salvation of the series and gave it a platform, an audience that grew from being a cult phenomenon to becoming one of the most iconic animated families in history. Take that, Family Circus. Like, it's wild to me to think that this show could have remained permanently canceled, which, hey, considering the landscape of streaming today, is a very real risk that offers little recourse. Most streaming platforms don't offer much of a chance for a series that might develop a cult following or a slow burn. In theory, if Family Guy or The Office premiered for the first time ever today on Netflix, there's a very real chance that both of these series would have been canned due to initial low ratings. That was the case for them on TV? What if it was the case for them on Netflix? If so, each respective series would have been scrapped. But on television, both The Office and Family Guy were able to find their footing since they were an acquired taste and over time built momentum and became the behemoths that they are today. But yeah, I have a very real concern for streaming platforms being hostile to that kind of content. The slow burns, the ones that need time. But I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens next. Overall, I know that Family Guy has gone downhill due to seasonal rot but I see its years on Adult Swim as a time capsule from my childhood, where I got to be a part of an audience that helped to save a show, build up the popularity of one of my favorite animation blocks, and gave me plenty of laughs along the way. Am I biased? Huh, you betcha. But who cares? I will always look back on that carefree era of my teenage life with sentimental love and plenty of cutaway gags. Lois, sometimes it's appropriate to swear. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. You bastard. <laughs>